<laughs> uh, this is Cal Cat the Cal Catster, and you're watching it. Yeah, this is going to be Discovery Episode 4, I think. Uh, season 5. Uh, it's called Face the Strange. And uh, they basically do a uh, action version of a uh, Many TNG disaster time warp time step episodes. Uh, we did one too in our fan films. It was called Critical Vitriol. The crew was on a, on a space station where time and space were repeating themselves. On uh, this one, um, all of Groundhog Day. And they had to figure out what was going on. And in that one, there was a, uh, a, a Q like character who was a shadow dancer who was uh, manipulating. In this one, there's no Q like character manipulating it. There, there is a robot in it, or a, or a, a cyborg in it, but it's not a Borg. Um, it's that, it's that lady that they return to. Uh, they do um, uh, so a time bug, which is a little spider, uh, goes in engineering, and uh, and uh, it attaches to engineering, messes up it's a time bug, yeah, um, from the temporal cold war allegedly. Uh, it's a, sort of like a space mine, and it makes the ship travel in and out of timelines until it is destroyed. Um, so they get to encounter some of the earlier versions of the ship, as well as visiting the episode Calypso. Uh, they, they visit that one, and uh, they, they, they conveniently uh, take the guy from the shuttle out of the story. The shuttle's gone because he left in the, in the short story. Uh, and, and it's just Zora there, and, and, and the future's messed up. There's another timeline where the, the where the uh, techno progenitor technology actually screws up the Federation, but mainly they spend some time on timelines back in the 20, 2250s trying to figure out what's going on over there and trying to convince the crew and another version of Burnham not to not to kill them while they're doing time travel. Stamets has his mycelian mycelian network channel. Now I know mycelian is supposed to be like mushrooms, but he's got his time power so he knows what he knows what they're doing so he's the cue like entity in the story so Stamets is yeah uh, it's just because they're on shrooms and they're actually not going anywhere they're not even in the future <laughs> no um, so they gotta figure out how to stop the time bug and, and get back and that's basically what the plot keeps shifting around uh, this episode especially unlike some of the other ones has the whisper syndrome uh, many of these newer shows do, uh, where the characters are literally talking almost below a actual speaking voice, and they're going like, "Oh yes, it's so wonderful that you were doing this and that on the ship." In order, they need to stop that. Um, yeah, you shouldn't have to turn up the volume on the on the episode to hear what they're saying. Uh, the audio foleying is is yeah, <laughs> I guess it's an art. I don't know. But I'd fix that. Um, Locke and Mole are one step ahead of them. They've somehow replicated the other item, even though that means they didn't need to go anywhere in the last episode. They could have replicated it from space if they had thought how the technology worked. But this is the same group that tried to stop an avalanche with a starship, two starships crashing into a planet, not harming the starships. Any. So they obviously don't know what science is. They're just making stuff up. Um... There's got to be a little science in Star Trek, even though actually the lithium crystals technically don't work, and hey, lithium. <laughs> That's literally what happened. So yeah. Anyway, so this one doesn't involve dilithium too much. It does involve a warp thing going out, a warp bubble thing. Uh, Sam, it's acting goofy, and because he's our silly Trek character in this one, more so than Tilly. Um, <clears throat> they also have uh, that uh, Commander Rainer guy, who's who's. Who is uh, not the the guy from Picard? Someone else. Um, it doesn't really look like that. Him, not really. He's just acting like him. Um, yeah. So I don't care who all the characters are. So it doesn't matter. You don't need to go in the comments and go like, "Oh, that's so and so." I, I don't care. Um, Star Trek Discovery is is kind of a mess, and yeah. So they have to do this time travel thing, and there's like a conic thing. And, which essentially is a wormhole. It's, a, it's how a white hole through a black hole wormhole would work. Uh, that, 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 that's kind of scientific, but not what they're doing with it. 
Um, and then that's another can of worms. Uh, t- a temporal, a temporal uh, bomb would probably render the crew entirely incapable of doing anything. Um, not to mention them like re-emerging in the walls or the floor or the ceiling or something. They would, they would be screwed. Um, hmm. Or space and time. Ah. So yeah, there's there's going to be some temporal shenanigans later on. Yeah, and uh, mm. so yeah, it was it was fine as a, as an adaptation of Critical Vitriol. It was it, 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 it was all right. Um, just, uh, the the angst is there. The characters behaving in an angsty way. That's totally there. It's it's, it's they they, adap- they adapted their fan film. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Well, two of them, Critical Vitriol and uh, and uh, the uh, the the Fallen Ones. They're still doing the Fallen Ones this season. The, 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 the poison cat character scene and all that. They're still looking for some strange sort of mystical thing. It's still the Fallen Ones, Planet of the Fallen Ones, <laughs> which is cool. Um, so yeah, we have uh, the doing that, and the other characters are behaving like they're doing that. They they go to another space cemetery and go there and stuff that will be right along the lines of that story um <laughs> also the character of Reno is basically a version of Sarah Esteban from uh, Chimera uh, only slightly homelier and about the same age so yeah um, <laughs> but yeah so as you see Sarah Esteban in the upcoming Chimera legacy movie the new one that we're making right now on the set. We're on the, we're on the set. Um, that uh, they'll say, "Oh, that's copying Reno." No, it's not. Actually, Reno's character is is her. So, Sail the way around. <laughs> Sail the way around. Um, just from your perspective, because it's time travel. No, it's it's she's not that much like Reno. Personality wise, yes. Um, but. Orientation, not so much. Esteban is probably, uh, in the story, is uh, probably straight. Um, whereas Reno is probably not straight. But that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and and, and um, you get to see uh, something from the trailers the showing uh, Burnham fighting herself, uh, which, which uh, is all of Superman 3 um, and uh, other episodes, uh, her past self. <laughs> which uh, change the timeline. So yeah, and also also because it's like a future imperfect slash cause and effect TNG episode slash the thing. Uh, they they do have the disaster. They do also have the like it be the uh, yeah the characters don't really match up because it's clearly like seven years later. Also similar to parallels that episode with Worf going in and out of time. Well, that one too. So, it wasn't just us. They were copying parallels and disaster, basically. Uh, they weren't copying, it, but they kind of were. They, they, they're aware. Um, no, and, and, and this section thirty-one thing. Don't even release that. That's the dumb. Yeah, no, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but yeah, Starfleet Academy set in the thirty-second century is too far in the future. Nobody cares about thirty-second century discovery. It's of the new Star Treks of the Abrams universe came first, but it's the weakest one. It's weaker than Picard seasons one and two. Not season three. Um, uh, yeah, Discovery has been a real mixed bag of all time. Yeah. Mmm. Uh, yeah. But have them do an X Gen one. Get, um, make Terry Metalis the showrunner of the next movie. That might be a good idea, and bring Brian Fuller back. Yeah, do that. Or you do your Academy story set in the 78 years between what would be 2324 and 2402. Set it in there somewhere. And have it be on the... <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, face the strange. A time bomb spider goes in the ship thing. And you face the strange. Because technically, yeah, that's a classic Trek. But the most interesting classic Trek stories and TNG stories were the ones where the characters were actually interacting in a reasonable way back and forth. And with the new new show, they have a problem with pacing. 
in direction, in script. Because they want to make it action-packed without knowing why the action makes sense. Uh, to, to further the Steve Shives discussions and similar things. He won't even do Discovery on his channel. To further that idea that, that, that yeah. And you can have a story with a lot of dialogue in it, that's fine. But it has to be dialogue that's interesting. You can't just have them doing Ter uh, you know, Terrence Malick thing in a room where they just, that the nature of existence, bro, that's boring. No, what are they doing while they're talking? What is their, what is their motivation? And, and often they misuse show don't tell in writing stories. And what they mean by show don't tell is don't over narrate things. That's what they mean. If you have to show it because part of the script has a plot hole, then you have to tell. You have to do that. So, yeah, if you if you if you if you've shown too much and the story doesn't make sense, then you have to tell a little bit of narration. But your story should make sense. They they. Point A should lead to point B. Time travel stories have that problem is that they don't actually do that. They're just, oh, let's show you member berries for earlier episodes of our show um, because, yeah, we're, we're running out of ideas. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the serialized format of, of that is different. Uh, Strange New Worlds is episodic, more episodic than, than serialized, but, uh, but that's the other show that's done in Canada. Because I treat Discovery as a fan film that, 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 even though it's supposedly official Star Trek, it's a very expensive fan film series. There's some comments that we made up on our Dilithium story on were, uh, were clarified in that, yes, there, there are, uh, there are <laughs> lithium batteries. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that technology is coated silicon and, uh, and stuff, and it is reactive. If you coat it with something that makes it reactive, copper, gold, or something, then it then it is. Uh, but but yeah, it's not. Yeah, lithium is dilithium, the uh, made up version. The original Star Trek. Yeah, they were just like, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna yeah, we used the, a term that existed, and we didn't mean to. The original Star Trek. They're, they're, somebody pointed that out to them, like after where no man has gone before. Don't call it lithium because that's a real element. Okay, we'll put a die in front of it. Just die. No. As they also trudge on ahead with yet other rumors about, uh, about Star Trek IV or thirteen, Star Trek thirteen really, um, and and uh, and Lower Decks uh, being uh, apparently the final season. This is also the final season of this one. Uh, but, but Star Trek thirteen, not much of a bunny trail there. Uh, uh, they. It's all it's all conjecture and rumor as far as I know because they keep throwing in that Helmsworth thing over and over again and that's from like four years ago and Chris Helmsworth is not going to be reprising his role as George Kirk. And no, they're not going to do that. Tarantino's not going to be in it. He was in his story was in one of my fan films, so we don't need to do that. We already went to the Mob Planet, one of my fan films. We don't need to do that. We've already done it. Unless you want to redo that fam that Mob Planet episode. But that would not make a good movie. That makes a good episode. Um, so don't do that. Get a fan film. Um, yeah, I yeah. Or the Roman planet, or the Cardassian planet, as we do in uh, the new one. <laughs> or the Cardassian planet. But in the new one. But yeah, they, they, they... And then there's another planet that... I don't know what direction they're trying to go. As a TNG person, DS9, Voyager and Enterprise... Uh, <laughs> you know, um, like, you, you, you want to stay in the future. And then one of the other rumors is that Star Trek Thirteen would be a prequel, again, set in the past. Don't go backward. Go forward. Make a Star Trek movie set in the 25th century. Make Starfleet Academy set in the 25th century. Go forward. Picard and crew or related luminaries. Do Star Trek uh, Legacy? Sure, why not? Um, we know it used to be a video game, so we're okay with that. Uh, they'll have to get permission. Well, they got permission for Lower Decks too. So, uh, yeah, they could do Legacy, uh, and uh, they should do a TNG movie. <laughs> this is from the guy that said we do not discuss a night in sick bay from Enterprise. <laughs> but yes, um, but yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, Save Enterprise back then. It was a prequel, but yeah, they didn't um, they they didn't do it right there either. They, they were finally getting their sea legs in the fourth season of Enterprise and deciding, oh, well, you got Manny Koto and those guys, and they figured out how to guard field and Jews Reese Stevens and figured out. We figured it out a little bit. We're gonna do that. Get Manny Koto back. They, yeah, do a movie and get it out of your systems. But as far as I was concerned about Starfleet Academy, you already did that in 2009. You made Ensign Kirk essentially the captain. You already did that. You've done that. You don't need to do that again. Right. So, uh, there's the rant. Oh, um, anyway. So, yeah. So, we don't need to do that again. Oh, get, get, no, no. Paramount, give us a call. Cal Cat, Mark Starts, Brown and Yeager, give us a call. T call us up, say, yeah, we've been borrowing from your fan films for 37 years. Can you help us? And I'll go, well, write me a check. <laughs> Send it to me, give it the money, I will help you out. I'll write it and be the showrunner. <laughs> no, the fans can't be the showrunner. Ah, oh, head writer. In the writer's room. Hollywood. Let's do this. <laughs> I've got lots of ideas. Um, mm. <laughs> do what? Do a Deep Space Nine movie. You know, it's been ten years. It's almost been. Ten, it's been eight years since Star Trek 2016, and the timeline should match up at this point with Star Trek: The Motion Picture and V'ger. Do a V'ger one, but where V'ger is totally pasting Ensign Kirk, Ensign Captain slash Kirk, and his crew. And they have to get help from the OG surviving members of the Enterprise crew. 95, 93rd, well, he'll didn't be 95. 95-year-old Captain Kirk and 90-year-old George Takai and 90-year-old Walter Hwanig should come in and help save the Enterprise. There's your anniversary movie. These three old dudes come up and they help save the ship. There's your movie. That's what they should do. <laughs> if they really want to go back to the time of Chris Pine and crew, they probably shouldn't because they didn't know what they were doing. They wanted to remake The Wrath of Khan. And they'd already remade it like four times in four different movies. Uh, they made they had, they had a they had Wrath of Khan, weak Wrath of Khan, Krooge, Commander Krooge from Star Trek Three. They had <laughs> Star Trek Four didn't really have a con. Star Trek V had a Zealot con, sort of a, a, a sort of, uh, yeah, it was a, a, a cyborg. Uh, Star Trek VI had a villainous con-like Klingon, Chang. Star Trek Seven Generations had Lursa and Betors, the and Soren, three cons in it. Um, why do they keep doing that over and over again? Don't do that. Uh, let, let's see. Star Trek First Contact, the Borg Queen, of course. Um, Star Trek Insurrection, a evil admiral and a cheesy alien con guy. Uh, Nemesis had Picard's twin, who was a con-type guy, doing a con-type story. So they've been doing it over and over and over. Stop. Stop with the villains. Stop with the... He's not the Joker to Kirk's Batman. He's, he's not. Or Picard's Batman, either. He's not Q to Picard's Batman. They never did a Q movie. Do a Q movie. Anyway, so... <laughs> well, they sort of had a con villain in, in 2009. And then they had the Nero. And then they had a con villain, literally, in the other one. And it didn't make sense because it was like a remake of Space Seed. And they shouldn't have known who it was yet. Um, and then in the third one, they had that weak captain guy that was on the planet. On the, on the, bee, with the, bee, the bees. Space bees drone things. How he would have had that, I don't know. So all of the, they're, they're uh, 70 percent of those movies are about some kind of con villain. The rest are Star Trek battling nature or Star Trek battling a god or something.